All right, Psalm 105. Psalm 105. I honestly thought they would run up here, but they didn't. <laughs> they had a little coaxing. Psalm 105, we'll start in verse 17, and we'll just read three verses tonight. Psalm 105, 105. In verse 17, He sent a man before them. This is the Lord talking about how He's preserved Israel and how He's interacted with them over the years. He, God, He sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant, whose feet they hurt with fetters, he was laid in iron. Until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. Now I want to preach you a message and just with a question in mind, how did the word of the Lord try Joseph? How did the word of the Lord try Joseph? Alright, let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, very much for your book. God, I pray you might bless it. And God, I'm all, all I'm asking you is for the, your, your people down here to understand what I did from you for, through the scriptures. And that's, that's all I'm asking. And uh, may your son be get glorified most of all. Uh, may he be exalted. In your son's name, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> now, how did the word of the Lord try Joseph? Now, first of all, I don't remember ever, ever recollect of the, that in, in the story of Joseph. How many of y'all read the story of Joseph? Yeah. Right, story of Joseph. One of the greatest types of Christ in the Bible. And it happens to be one of my favorite uh, stories in the Bible. And it's not just because uh, he's a great type of Christ. It's because it's, it's a really great story. The, Joseph, the, 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 um, the story of Joseph has a lot of irony of it. And if there's any, if you guys like reading anything, uh, um, you know, with a lot of suspense and stuff in it, you like irony. Yeah. Irony is stuff like, well, well, you know what, that's ironic. You know, that's happening. But when, when you see, when you read the story of Joseph, you can't help but read Jesus Christ into the story. And the Lord takes, he's a master, he's a master writing. And what he's doing is in the Genesis chapter, I think it starts in chapter 38, 39, 40, and it goes all the way through with one, with one chapter as exception. But he has given you, God has hand-selected these little bits and pieces of Joseph's story so you can learn things about your Savior. And what I want to do is just focus on just one question, is how, how did the word of the Lord try Joseph? But in all the story that I remember reading in the Old Testament in, in about Joseph, I don't remember the Lord ever speaking directly to Joseph. Maybe I'm... Anybody disagree? Okay, all right. That's what I thought. All right, so I don't remember the Lord ever remember directly speaking to Joseph. Now, he did give him dreams. Right? He was able to interpret dreams. God gave him the interpretation. But I don't ever remember the Lord ever speaking directly to Joseph. I'm not saying he never did. I'm just saying the Holy Spirit never recorded it. But the word of the Lord, what was it? It was the dreams that he gave him. That's the only clue that you ever had. Right. So the clue ever he had that, 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 the Lord, that the word of the Lord ever spoke to Joseph was through his dreams. What were his dreams? I call them nightmares. Because if I ever had a dream about corn eating other corn yeah. <laughs> I, would, I would be waking up in a sweat now he didn't give him the I understand, I, I didn't understand Joseph, uh, Pharaoh was the one that had the dreams okay? but I'm, Joe, Pharaoh had those dreams back there when, the, when, Pharaoh, when uh, Joseph came up and he started uh, interpreting those dreams I bet he called nightmares but way back when, way back when I, I jumped ahead of myself, excuse me but way back when the Lord gave him the Lord gave him some uh, dreams you know what they were? <laughs> Some really obscure stuff. Yes, but you know what? He got the correct interpretation because you know what his brothers did? And so did his father. As a matter of fact, they got upset with him. What were they? He says, he says in my dream, I had all these corns of stock and all these sheaves right here. And you know what they did? I had all these 11 sheaves around me. And you know what they did? They bowed to my sheaf. <laughs> well, that's pretty, that's pretty obvious. One day his brothers are going to bow down to him. Yes, sir. And the dream was from God. Yeah. Now what's the next one? He said, the, he, said all, he said the sun and the moon and the eleven stars bowed down to me. That's kind of obvious too. And his father even picked up on it. He said, I and your mother and your, and your eleven brothers are all going to bow down to you? Yeah. The, Bible says the, the, the Bible says that his father rebuked him. 
for his dream. But that's, that's, that's the dream, that's the word of the Lord that has, was given to Joseph. Those two dreams, the dreams that he has given to Joseph, the, and I, call, I would call them a promise. God promised him one day he was going to bear rule. Yes, sir. Now, how did the word of the Lord try Joseph? It said it right here in, in, in Psalms. It said this. Whose feet they hurt with fetters, he was laid in iron until the time that his word came. The word of the Lord tried him. How did the promise that he would end up bearing rule try Joseph? When I'm thinking of trying something, I'm thinking of what Peter says. He says the faith when it try, is being tried with fire. In other words, something is trying it. Something is testing it out. Uh, you, how many of y'all ever said your mother or your father said, don't try me? You ever heard that? Raise your hand. If you, am I the only one that's heard that? Okay, all right. Yeah, your mom or dad, don't try me. In other words, don't test me. Because you might not like the outcome, right? <laughs> you, might not what, you might not like what comes out of the fire. <laughs> because it's going to be hot and it usually goes on your rear end, right? Don't try me. But the, he said the Lord of the Lord tried him. And there's three different ways of what I want to do is I want to bring it to your attention that how the word of the Lord tried Joseph. Number one, he, the word of the Lord tried Joseph to see if he would believe the promise. Okay, that, that's, the first, that's the first way how the word of the Lord tried Joseph. Just to simply if he would believe it. Now you're looking for something. God is looking for something, and he, and it, he says, "Without what, it is impossible to believe Him." Or excuse me, no, without faith, it is impossible to please Him. Excuse me, to please Him. He's looking down here, and He's looking for faith. What is faith? Faith is just simply believing what you're told. Right? Don't stick your finger in the light socket. It's going to shock you. If you don't have a lot of faith, what are you going to do yep. as a kid? Just like every other kid, you're going to stick your finger in the light socket. Right? Yeah, so, you know, <laughs> well, my finger's too big for it, so I'm going to get your kitchen knife and put it in there, right? Don't give no ideas. <laughs> the first way how it tried Joseph, the word of the Lord, those dreams, the promise that he would bear rule, yeah. is that it was to see if he would believe the promise. There's three different little ways. I have three little subpoints under this. It was to see if he would believe his promise in spite of his senses. You gotta think about this. Joseph was 17 years old when these dreams came to him. These two dreams, when he came to him, he was brave enough or he was confident enough to even actually voice that he actually had these dreams. Now, your, your view of Joseph might be a little bit different than mine, but at 17 years old, I picture him as a, as a little bit of a spoiled brat. You might think differently, okay? I know he's a big type of Christ, but you know what? He was a human being too, right? I mean, tattletale. Did he have to go squeal on his brothers? He knew who, Daddy, who, he, he knew who Daddy's favorite was, wearing his little colored robe everywhere. That's what I picture. I picture him as a spoiled brat. But you know what? He learned some things <laughs> throughout his life. He learned he wasn't. He learned he learned he wasn't uh, exactly you know should be treated fair, uh, uh, favorably all all through his life. God had different plans for him, but he had these dreams, and he had to believe them in spite of his senses. Even though he was his daddy's favorite, he understood he was only 17 years old. Who ever heard of a 17 year old king at that time? You know what he was. You know what he was. You know what he was thinking. He was going to bear rule. He was out in the middle of nowhere, and they're out in the middle of a desert, trying to find grass for his sheep. A shepherd, a little shepherd boy bearing rule. You know what he had to do. He had to override his own senses. I can't help but think of another character in the scripture, Adam. How many of y'all remember Adam? Out there. And the word of the Lord actually spoke to him, and he says, "In the day that thou eatest, thou shalt surely what." Did he eat the fruit? Did he die? Well, 
you got to look at us the way he's looking at it. Did he have the light of the New Testament? Did he have the light? Did he have the light that when you sin, you die spiritually? Did he have Paul the apostle writing epistles to? Him? Did he have First Corinthians? Did he have Ephesians? Did he have First Peter? He didn't have any of that. All he had was in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely d i e die. That's all he had. Chomp, chomp, chomp. Twenty four hours later, he's still running around. He's kicked out of the garden, but he's still running around. Think about how he thought of that. Everything he saw, everything he heard, everything he smelled and tasted, just the very fact that he was actually taking in senses, told him that he was not dead. And you know what's worse than that? In a sense, Satan was correct. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Satan told him he wasn't going to die. God told him he was. Yep. He lived 900 years. You know, sometimes you're going to have to do, you're going to have to believe what God said in spite of what you see. Amen. In spite of what you hear. Yeah. In spite of your senses. Amen. Good, but the Lord said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance, nor on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. You know, he created your eyes. But he only created you to see so much. Yes, and it's a really good thing you don't see everything that's there. Amen. Amen. He seeth not as a man seeth. For the Lord looketh on the outward appearance. But the Lord looketh on the heart. The word of the Lord tried Joseph to see if he just simply believed what he said. He believed the promise. Not only in spite of his senses, but also in spite of what he already knew. You know, Joseph knew a whole lot of stuff that just contradicted what God said. You know, it was not in his culture for his father and his brothers to bow down to him. Amen. Everything that was culturally incorrect, God said it's going to be reversed. Yes, sir. And might I add, you need to learn the very valuable skill of ripping your own culture out of your own mind when you're dealing with God's word. Because not everything in our culture is correct. Amen. Not everything in how you were raised is correct. Right. Not everything the values of America puts out for, you, out for you to see is correct according to God's book. Amen. But everything that he was raised under, you know what it was? Is the older one always gets the inheritance. The older one always gets the blessing. You know, he was, a, he was 10 behind. Yep. He was, yeah, he was 10 behind. He only had one other younger brother. There's 10 brothers ahead of him. I said, God, can't you count? Don't you know what our culture says? My dad's going to bow down to me? That never will work. God says, fool you with your culture. I don't have to go with your culture. I don't have to go with what you were raised to believe. Amen. Amen. Right. He had to be, he had to, he had to believe that in spite of what he already knew, or what he thought he knew. I can't ever, I can't help but think of Abraham. Abraham, you're going to have a kid. With Sarah. I say, God, I don't know if you know how this works, but when people get old, things happen. Or they don't happen. I didn't say that. He did. Certain, God, I, I didn't know if you were aware of this, but certain physiological things happen where it makes you incapable of having children, both male and female. Now, I had to inform of this for in form of this uh, of you God but maybe you didn't mean exactly what you said because I know from a scientific standpoint that we are unable to have children you know what God doesn't care of he doesn't care about what you know 
He doesn't care what's in your quantitative articles. He doesn't care what's in your anatomy and physiology books. He doesn't care. If he said something's going to happen, it's going to happen. No wonder he laughed. Because he just knew some stuff. You know what? God knows a whole lot more than he did. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither my ways your ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. You know what's going to happen? The word of the Lord is going to try you. Amen. When you're in a, when you're a, a place in your life, let's go back to the other point in spite of your senses. When you're, point, you're, you're, in a, you're in a point in time in your life when everything you see and hear is contradicting what he said, that word of the Lord is going to try you. Amen. And it's going to see whether or not you're going to believe it. And when you're in, and when, when it starts contradicting things that you know, some things that you think you know, it's going to try you. To do what? To see whether or not you're going to believe it. And then it's also going to be in spite, to see if you'd believe it, or see if Joseph would believe the promise in spite of the gainsayers. In spite of your senses, in spite of what you already think you know, and then in spite of the gangsayers. You know there's a lot of gangsayers? You know who they were? Everybody in Joseph's world. You know, all the servants didn't dare do anything. But, you know, all the people that could actually speak to Joseph freely, you know what they did? They mocked what, he, they mocked what, what God told them through his dreams. In spite of the gangsayers, he, he, it's gonna try, he tried Joseph whether or not he was going to believe it in spite of what everybody else believes. Did you, you, you all know there's other beliefs here besides Christianity, right? You, you know that, right? <laughs> In spite of what everybody else believes. Shall thou indeed rule over us? But well, they got hostile with him. Here's his father. Shall I and thy mother bow down before them? He rebuked him. Yep. Why? For what God told him. Through a dream. A promise. You're going to bear rule. You know, I can't... <laughs> There's, I mean, there's so much stuff out there. There's, there's, I remember this, I remember this one guy, he was in a, it was in a, I think it was a Latin class, or so, I don't know where I was in, but it was one of the first things I had in college. This professor, you know, professor, he gets up and he starts talking and, and, he, and it had nothing to do with the, with, the, with the root of the verb or whatever it was, but then it, it, he brought up Noah's Ark. He says, oh, that's just like the Babylonian legend. And he erases it off the board. Yeah? It's an awful lot like the Babylonian legend. How do you all know the Babylonians had a flood legend? The fool. How many, why didn't he bring up Japan's flood legend? How many of y'all knew that Japan has an ancient legend about a flood? How many of y'all know that the ancient Chinese have a legend about a flood? How many of y'all know that Mongolians have an ancient legend of a flood? How many of y'all know that the Native Americans have ancient legends of a flood? How many of y'all know that there's African tribes that have ancient legends of floods? I wonder why. Why? If all the, if you have lists of legends all over all these ancient cultures, you know what they have one thing in common? A flood. Just gangsayers. Just blow them off. Here's a, we know these stars are billions of light years away and it takes billions of years to reach the earth and all that kind of stuff. So therefore, it had to have been there for billions of years until they start getting more and more telescopes out there and they're finding fully formed galaxies out there that's supposed to have been billions of years old out there. Just, to, just forget it. I mean, don't pay attention to the gangsters. God says he made the stars on the fourth day. He made them on the fourth day. You know, God, the word of the Lord tried Joseph to see if he would believe the promise. And secondly... The word of the Lord tried Joseph to see how long he'd wait for the promise. He had to wait for the promise through trials. Just going to visit his, going to visit his brothers, just to, you know, of course, to spy on them, like the brat he was. <laughs> Drag him off the mule, throw him into a well, an empty well. 
down there probably thinking that, well, okay, guys, I kind of deserve it. I squealed and can you let me out now? <laughs> nope. He gets there and thirstier and thirstier, and all of a sudden he hears some, uh, some caravan wagons coming with some of the, you know, being hauled by other um, uh, tribes and stuff like that, and they're hearing an exchange, and he hears money <laughs> somebody else's hand. And they drag him out and they throw him into a, into a cart. He's probably thinking, yeah, this is a really great practical joke, guys. Let me out. And as his brothers get farther and farther from the distance, he realizes more and more, you know, what he's going through? It's a trial. It's a real trial. Yep. None of us has ever been kidnapped out of our own country. Yeah. We have a missionary whose daughter went through that. Yep. I bet she knows what that, what, a little bit what Joseph went through. And when he was being sold on the block, you know what that was? It was a trial. Amen. And while he was standing there being sold on the block, hearing a language he didn't even hear, and all of a sudden Potiphar gets the, gets the highest bidder. You know, he get, he gets, and it starts coming down, and, and he starts being roped up again to be led over to Potiphar's house. I bet she was remembering his dreams that God gave him. Yeah. And he had to believe God through the trials can't help but think of Jeremiah in the dungeon sinking down in the mire thinking that God maybe you should treat your prophets just a little bit better than this not only did he have to wait a long time for the promise through trials he also had to wait through false hope I don't know if you ever all went, ever went through false hope before, but you think that things are starting to get a little better. Amen. And all of a sudden that hope is just ripped out from under you. Yes, what a horrible feeling. He brings up to Potiphar's house, and he, Joseph starts seeing, seeing things getting a little bit better. He starts just doing his job humbling himself, doing this and doing that. When he was told to do A, B, and C, you know what he did? He did A, B, and C. And sometimes he did D. And Potiphar saw him. He said, hey, you can start doing A, B, C, and D now. Yep. Sure, boss. Next morning he, goes, he does A, B, C, and D. And sometimes he wakes up and he does A, B, C, D. And you know what he does? He does E. And Potiphar looks back and says, hey, I've got something profitable here. I'm going to give you some more responsibility. And the time goes on more and more. He starts getting more and more powerful. And Joseph starts seeing something. Hey, God's coming through. Yep. Man, I really didn't like the trial, but God's really coming through. I, I, I see it getting better. Until a wicked woman gets a hold of him. Yes, sir. And then he gets put lower than where he has ever been before. I can't help but think of Eve. Eve was given a 